Okay, we're going to finish chapter five by doing three exam questions um, that should hopefully bring it up to the right kind of standard that we need. So it says here that the Venn diagram shows the probabilities for students at a college taking part in various sports. A is taking part in athletics, T is tennis, and C is cricket. P and Q are probabilities that we don't know here. The probability that a student is selected at random, takes part in athletics or tennis is 0.75. So we're going to try and find out the value of P that we've got here. So we know this whole thing that we've got here is 0.75. And look, P is actually appearing in two different places. So if I know that this whole section that I'm going to highlight in here in green, if I know that this is 0.75, I should be able to find out what P is pretty quickly. So to find out the value of P for part one of the question, I know that one subtract 0.75 subtract 0.05 is going to be equal to P. Because if you think about it, this whole thing is one, if I remove the 0 0.75 and I remove the 0 0.05, I will get that value of P. We don't even need to find this bit up here. So I'm going to do 1, take away 0 0.75, take away 0 0.05, which is obviously 0 0.2. So P is equal to 0 0.2. Now I'm going to go back to my diagram. I'm going to erase this bit, and I'm actually just going to start filling those things in. So this is 0 0.2, and this is 0 0.2. Then it jumps in and says, state giving a reason whether or not it's the events A and T are statistically independent. Show your working clearly. So before we do that, I think I should figure out what Q is. Now, just now I had said this whole section that we had here was 0.75. So I should be able to find out what Q is. So part B, I know that Q plus P plus 0.4 is 0.75. That's what they've told us in the question. Athletics or tennis is 0.5. And we know that P is 0.2. So Q plus 0.2 plus 0.4 is 0.75. And so Q is going to be equal to 0.75 minus 0.6, which is 0.15. Okay. So I can now go back to this diagram. I'm going to put in all of the probabilities that I know, and I'll do them in red so they stand out a bit better. I've got 0 0.15, 0 0.2 and 0.2. Okay, so we're going to do this statistically independent. If they are independent, we know that the probability of A and T is going to be equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of T. So we're just going to figure out all of those different things. First of all, the probability of A and T. A and T athletics and tennis is just going to be this 0.2 that we've got here. And then we're going to work out the probability of A multiplied by the probability of T. Well, the probability of athletics is going to be these two here, which is 0 0.35. And the probability of tennis is going to be these two here, which is 0 0.6. So 0 0.35 times 0 0.6 is clearly not going to be equal to 0 0.2, but it's pretty close. So we've got that the probability of A and T is not equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of T. So, if I can spell that right, athletics and tennis are not independent. Meaning that if you found someone who studied athletics, there was probably um, some relationship that would mean that they either were more likely or less likely to study tennis. They are not independent from each other. So no, they are not independent. Then it says, find the probability that a student selected at random does not take part in athletics or cricket. So they can't take part in athletics or cricket. So these people don't take part in athletics or cricket nor do these people take part in athletics or, crit or cricket. Anyone that was inside here does athletics and anyone that's in here does cricket. So it's just the green ones for that last bit of the question. So it's just going to be 0 0.45. So for part C, it is just going to be 0 0.05 plus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.45. Okay, let's check that we got all of these right. So we got 0 0.2 for P, 0 0.15 for Q, and we've said that 0 0.2 is not equal to 0 0.21, so they are not independent, and we get 0 0.45 for part C of the question. 
Okay. You might like to have a go at this question yourself, so you can pause the video and see how you do, but I'm about to go through this one here. So we've got Aliona, Dawn and Sergey are sometimes late for school. The events A, D and S are as follows. Aliona is late for school, Dawn is late for school and Sergey is late for school. We've got the Venn diagram and it just keeps saying uh, we've got A, D and S are the probabilities associated with each region of D. I don't know why it says each region of D. I think it really should be saying each region of this whole thing S that we have. The constants P, Q and R each represents probabilities associated with the three separate regions outside D. Um, so, oh, actually, that's that's OK. It's, it was it was right what it said. Um, it's got the probabilities are 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and 0 0.05 are the probabilities associated with D and P, Q and R are the probabilities outside D. First of all, it says write down two of the events, A, D and S, that are mutually exclusive. So the ones that do not overlap each other are A and S. So the two which are mutually exclusive are going to be A and S. And the reason is they do not overlap. Or you could say they do not intersect. Or you could say that the probability of A and S happening is equal to zero. That shows that something is mutually exclusive. The probability that Sergey is late for school is 0.2. The events A and D are independent. Find the value of R. OK, quite a few things to deal with to begin with. Um, but if we know that Sergey's probability of being late for school is 0 0.2, that means I can concentrate on this circle for a second. So pretty quickly, I can say that Q is going to be 0 0.15 because 0 0.2 take away 0 0.05 is equal to 0 0.15. So this is going to have to be 0 0.15 here. It then says that A and D are independent. OK, so it looks like I'm going to maybe I didn't even need to do that bit about Q just yet, but I think I might want to. So because A and D are independent, that means that the probability of A and D is going to be equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of D. Well, let's have a look what A and D are. A and D is 0.1. So that's going to be 0 0.1 over here. The probability of A overall is going to be P plus 0 0.1. So let's just erase this. So it's going to be P plus 0 0.1. And the probability of D, well, actually, we can just add these probabilities up here. We've got 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and 0 0.05. That's going to be 0 0.25. So that is going to be multiplied by 0 0.25. OK, I'm going to solve this equation by dividing 0 0.1 by 0 0.25 to get P plus 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.25 is 0 0.4. And then I'm going to subtract 0 0.1 from that so that I get P is equal to 0 0.3. OK, so I've got Q is 0 0.15. Let's just highlight that because I think I'm going to need it. And P is 0 0.3. We're trying to find out the value of R. So we've just said that P is 0 0.3. Ah, oh, great. I did need to find Q because now I can find out what R is going to be equal to. So let's just do a long calculation for this. R is going to be equal to 1 minus all of those other probabilities. So that's 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.05 and 0 0.15. 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.05 and 0 0.15. OK, so let's just think what these all add up to. That's 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So 1 minus 0 0.7 is 0 0.3 there. Four marks, so quite a lot of work there. Dawn and Sergey's teachers believe that when Sergey is late for school, Dawn tends to be late for school. So his teacher, or their teachers, sorry, um, their teacher thinks that their lateness probabilities are related to each other. In other words, he thinks that they are dependent. He thinks they are not independent of each other. So state whether or not D and S are independent, giving a reason for your answer. So this is part C. If they are independent, then we know that the probability 
that Dawn and Sergei are late will be equal to the probability of Dawn being late multiplied by the probability of Sergei being late. So the probability of both of them being late, Dawn and Sergei, is 0 0.05. You can just see that in the Venn diagram here. The probability of Dawn multiplied by the probability of Sergei. Well, the probability of Dawn is the middle bit, which is 0 0.25. And the probability of Sergei is 0 0.2. So we're going to do 0 0.25 times 0 0.2, which is 0 0.05. So they are equal to each other. So the probability of DNS is equal to the probability of Dawn multiplied by the probability of S. So they are independent. They are independent from each other. Part D says, comment on the teacher's belief in the light of your answer to part C. Well, they're completely independent from each other. So this teacher thinks that if Sergei is late for school, Dawn tends to be late for school. Maybe he thinks they're like hanging out with each other before school. But there is no evidence for this because we think that they are independent from each other. So we just need to say that. Comment on the teacher's belief in light of part C. The teacher's belief is not supported as their probabilities are independent. In other words, it's just as likely that Sergey will be late whether um, Dawn is late or not. So let's have a look at our answers. We've got, first of all, the mutual exclusive, that they are the two mutual exclusive because there is no intersection, or you could say the probability of them happening is zero. And we came up with R as 0 0.3, which we did get as our answer over here. They are independent since 0 0.25 times 0 0.2 is equal to 0 0.05. That's all of the stuff we've got explaining here. And then part D, the teacher's belief would appear not to be justified as D and S are independent. The teacher's belief is not supported, not justified. Same thing. OK, we are on the last question now of these. A factory buys 10% of its components from supplier A, 30% from supplier B and the rest from supplier C. It is known that 6% of the components it buys are faulty. Of the components bought from the supplier A, 9% are faulty, and of the components bought from supplier B, 3% are faulty. Find the percentage of the components bought from the supplier C that are faulty. So, you could do a tree diagram, or you could not do a tree diagram. I might do it with a tree diagram, and I might do it without, but I'm going to do it without, first of all. So, the way that you get a faulty one is you would have the ones which are faulty A's, and the faulty B's and the faulty C's. So 6% of them are faulty that I've got here. So on this left hand side here, I'm going to put 0 0.06. Now, how many of them are going to be faulty for A? So for A, it says 10% of them are from A and 9% of them are faulty. So we want it to be from supplier A and we want it to be faulty, which is going to be from supplier A is 10% and faulty is going to be 0 0.09. Now, faulty and B means we're going to take it from B and we want it to be faulty. So to take it from supplier B, there's 30% of them and it says 3% of them are faulty. So that's going to be 30% times 0 0.03. And for the last part, faulty and from C, we want it to be from C and we want it to be faulty. So for it to be from C, then how many says the rest of them are from supplier C? So we've got 100%, take away the 10% and take away the 30%. So 60% of them are from supplier C. And how many of them are faulty? Well, that's the percentage of them that we're trying to find. I'm going to call that P. So I'm going to multiply it by P. And that just gives us an equation. So I get 0 0.06 equals 0 0.1 times 0 0.09, which is 0 0.009. And then I've got 0 0.3 times 0 0.03, which is another 0 0.009 plus 0 0.6p. So I'm going to double that because I've got two of them. 
and I'm going to do 0 0.06 take away that, which is 0 0.024. So that's 0 0.024 is equal to 0 0.6p. So I'm going to divide that by 0 0.6, and it looks like that I have 0 0.06 for my value of p. In other words, 6% are faulty from c. Now, if you found that a bit difficult, you could think about doing this with a tree diagram. So we could have A, B, and C. We could have the probabilities of them being faulty, not faulty, faulty, not faulty, faulty, not faulty. A, it said, was 10%, B was 30%, and C was 60%. If it's A and it's faulty, it was 0 0.09. I'm not going to worry about the other probability. If it's B and it's faulty, it's 0.03. And to find out for C, we're going to do it like this. So what we actually did here is we multiplied all of the different branches together. So we had this branch, we did 0 0.1 times 0 0.09, which is over here. We did 0 0.3 times 0 0.03, which is over here. And we did 0 0.6 times P, which is over here. And we know that those three percentages that we would have got would all have to add up to the 6%, which is how many of them are faulty overall. It then says a component is selected at random. Explain explain why the event the component was bought from supplier B is not statistically independent from the component is faulty. So the event, it was bought from supplier B. So the probability it was bought from supplier B is just 0 0.3. The probability that it was faulty, well, we've just worked that out, 6% of them were faulty. And we're going to now look at the probability that it is from B and it is faulty. Well, I think we actually worked that out over here. Probability it's B and faulty was 0 0.009. So we're going to do 0 0.009. Now, if they are independent, we know that the probability of B and F should be equal to the probability of B multiplied by the probability of F. Um, but... Not po uh, the probability of B times the probability of F is 0 0.3 times 0 0.06, which is 0 0.018. And that is not, 0 0.018 is not equal to 0 0.09. So they are not independent. Hence, uh, bought from B. and faulty are not statistically independent. OK, let's just check the mark scheme. We're looking for 6% of faulty from C. Oh, did I do something wrong here? So it should have been 7%. I'm going to have a look back and see if I did something wrong in my equation solving. And I've said that these are not independent. So I got that one correct, but I just want to have a look and see if I did something wrong on my calculator here. So let's just have a quick look. I'm going to just have a look at this line of information that I've got. So I'm going to do my 0 0.06 minus 0 0.1 times 0 0.09 uh, minus 0 0.3 times 0 0.03. Yeah, I did that bit wrong. It wasn't, I don't know what I must have typed there. This should have been 0 0.042. And I'm going to divide that uh, by 0 0.6. And so it should have been 0 0.07. My mistake, very easy to make mistakes on calculators. So 7% of them are faulty from C. So I probably would have lost um, a method mark in there. I would have, sorry, I would have lost one of these accuracy marks. Probably lost two of those marks, which is pretty unfortunate. Um, they've got a suggestion of doing it with a Venn diagram. I don't really like it with a Venn diagram. Um, I think this is probably a better way of doing this. OK, sorry about my mistake at the end there, um, but those are some exam questions that should help you with chapter five.